there. You're watching Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media. I am Mike Morales here in San Antonio. We're, we're demonstrating our brand new banner. You'll see this, this the full length tall banner at our uh, Great Festival Chase. That young man sitting over there is Jim Johnson in Youngstown, Ohio. Beautiful downtown Youngstown. <laughs> where this, where right. the turf meets the turf. <laughs> Uh, I tell you, it's uh, a habit in place. We got to get some more tequila down there, but well, you know, you, you're getting the bulk of all the stuff that the rest of the state doesn't have. So you know, the, you, that is you're true. One of the, you're you're one of those guys that the, the liquor stores are going to be looking for you now. Um, we have been dissecting and really enjoying this new iteration of Don Rhino. Now, take a take a look at this. This is an organic. Tequila, check check out the check out the, the stuff that they've done to it. It says organic. That is a rhino. Yes, um, I, I think that is the um, the gentleman who spearheads the uh, the company. Uh, his name is Ryan Barry, I believe, and uh, I think Rhino must be his nickname or something. So, and to my knowledge, these guys are based in uh, in Austin, Texas. Although they their company that imports that uh, this tequila is based in Lufkin, Texas, which I'm not familiar with every little town in Texas, but yeah, it could be like a mile outside of Austin, but it, well, you know what? Austin is so crowded. If you can live a mile away, you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, right. The, the, the traffic to get there, to, you may as well pack a lunch and, and plan on staying over because you guys need a train in Austin. Okay. A train from, from San Antonio to Austin. That's what you need. Train. A tequila train, Mike. That, that might be uh, that might be a bit better. The tequila train. You know, if we could fit all these bottles copyright I have for, in here, trademark, <laughs> copyright, patent it right now. This recording has not been released. Tequila train. The, te- the tequila train. Uh, yeah. Well, believe it or not, they actually have a, one. They they started. They have a they have one in Napa. That's a, a wine train. Right. That once a once a month they had converted to a tequila train, uh, and I think Dulce oh. Vida, uh, I believe Dulce Vida is doing that. Uh, they did it once. I'm not sure if it's if it's something they'll be doing uh, consistently, but where where they commandeer the train and they serve Dulce Vida. Now Dulce Vida has their five year, uh, uh, their five year extra añejo is aged in in uh, in wine barrel. Oh wow! We've, yeah, we've done the the tasting. Um, uh, on Sipping Off the Cup, so you can find it uh, on our Sipping Off the Cup. It was a Brand of Promise nominee, and I think it was a winner, actually. But tonight, check this out. Look at look at the packaging on this one. Now, it, it's a barrel. It's a Blanco. It's a barrel. The Blanco was an oven, okay? This is a barrel, and it is the coolest thing. Uh, you know, I... I it might be a little gimmicky, but I got to tell you, it's got a good hand feel, too, doesn't it? It does, and, you know, I'm always one that, you know, if your bottle can stick out on the shelf in some way, that's a good thing. Um, whether it's a gimmick or not, uh, you know, based on what we tasted before, I, I don't think so, but I, I would say that uh, that definitely sticks out on the shelf. Now, this is, uh, this is an organic reposado, okay, so we're going we're gonna to pour some. I'm going to use my Stossel Jarrito, the one with the wider mouth, that uh, we generally use for mezcal, and this is uh, Jim. Jim had some really good experiences with his uh, with his tequila one that he used earlier. Yeah, it's um, it, it's almost like I, I I poured it into the glass, and it was almost like one of those. And I don't want to describe it like this, but one of those bathroom air freshers that just it put that scent right out into the air about as yeah. high up as possible, and it just kind of came down on me. I, I had the Glass in front of me about a foot and a half, and I said, "Oh, that smells phenomenal." You know, maybe maybe we maybe we missed our mark. Maybe what we need is or agave air freshener. <laughs> you know, yeah. agave air freshener for sale on the tequila train. That's it, man. You know, because uh, I remember years and years ago when I was a kid, we we took the uh, we went to Universal Studios. And at that time, they had the, the big King Kong display, you know, where you, you take the tram into a studio and you have this animatronic King Kong that's huge. And as, you, as it's growling at you, he opens his mouth 
and his, his breath, it blows on you, and it smells like bananas. And it was, it was, they actually manufactured a, a banana, a banana, a scent company manufactured a scent specifically for this ride. So when, when King Kong screamed at you, you know, this, this was a huge animatronic, it was bigger than your, yeah. than your tram, it would smell like bananas. But it that was, it was kind of like that, yeah, it, it kind of, it was a, it was really manufactured banana scent. Candy smell. banana, yeah. Banana. Yeah, candy banana, yeah, right. Um, we were nice enough to get a cell sheet from, from uh, Rhino Tequila. This is the, the Reposado Añejo. It's aged nine months. In uh, aged, uh, it's used American oak barrel. Okay. Uh, so, so it's not, uh, for nine months, it's, it's rather light. It's kind of a, it is. Uh, uh, it, what would you say, like a straw color? Yeah, it's it's just a light straw color and, and um, yeah, for actually for nine months that it that's that's lighter than I would imagine, but it's it's very clear, very clean. Let's see what we get to our smell here. Oh, now I'm still getting that agave, and obviously it it. It's a bit more concentrated because the chimney on this glass isn't as tall, so we're we're a little closer to the smell. Ah. So the the sweet aroma, the sweet citrus aroma that I described on the Blanco, it's got just a touch of it's been put in the oven for a little bit. It's been baked. It's got just that the sugar is kind of caramelized as far as the aroma, but it's still very subtly sweet and clean. Well, the, the agave, it just shines right through. You can, you oh, can yeah. smell it. In fact, I would say, Jim, maybe you'll agree with me that, that the wood notes are really secondary to the agave notes that are still there. Yeah, that it, it is first. It is definitely first. Yeah, it's almost the, the nose is almost identical to the Blanco, except except on the underlying there's some there's some spiciness. Yeah. I'm getting a little bit of the spiciness from from the barrel. Yeah, the, the but it but it is um it is a it is a complement to the agave. It is not a it's not the first thing you get. Are you getting? Uh, are you still getting the? Uh, uh, are you, do you notice that you have to get really get in there to your glass, or, or are you just doing that because you want? It's <laughs> you it's know, it's, just a, it's a little bit. You got to get a little bit closer in there. Um, mm. Still though, it's not overwhelming. The 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 blanco was not overwhelming. You could actually no. take a good deep breath of it and and not not be you know. Sometimes I've taken a nice deep whiff and. <laughs> It catches me a little, but not yeah. with this. This is very mellow. It's very uh, clean. Now, I, I obviously have enjoyed some of it. Uh, Jim has not. I, I, I don't think you had any of this prior. So you're, no. you're not getting any alcohol at all, are you? You're not, you're not any, any of the alcohol. Sometimes every once in a while you'll get it in the, in the bottom. But I just wanted to make sure that Jim wasn't getting alcohol where – or was getting alcohol where I'm not, because I think this is across the board. I'm not getting any alcohol at all. Yeah, I, and and honestly, it's um, really it's the agave the entire way through. Then that underlying hint of the wood spice, that kind of caramelized sugar and the citrus smell, um, the orange blossom that we mentioned with the blanco, that's now a little bit more like orange, but still very sweet. And then yes. Yeah, well, honestly, this is this is like the um, the the finish on the aroma on this has got no alcohol on it. It's 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 the 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 sweetness and then just the end of the agave. Yeah. Well, let's see what it let's see how it tastes. Let's let's see right. what's going there. Wow. Nice long finish. 
Ooh. Wow. Now I do get. Now you know that there's a little bit of that wood in there with that with this taste, but it's it's kind of um just a light pepper spice note on the back end. Yes. Yes. But it's one of those things too where I've 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 had those on some some tequila that we've tasted where it's right up front. It's still that agave, and then the pepper kind of right at the back of the throat, right before the finish comes through. But it's it doesn't um, doesn't catch you off guard. No, it's it's a uh, and it's a nice lingering. It's a little it lingers on the palate a little bit. Nice warm fuzzy on that finish. Um, you know, and and I can see where the blanco and the repel could possibly. Um, well, we said the Blanco was a good sipping tequila, but obviously 80% of every tequila that is consumed in the U.S. is, is consumed in, in cocktails. Right. Uh, I, I could see that Blanco in a nice, you know, in a nice Paloma, but even this Reposado would, would shine right through in a, in a Paloma as well. Just It's very refreshing. It you is. You know, the, the flavor profile is more refreshing than, than, than minerally or, or agave forward where you, you, you would, you know, where it would mix. Um, in an even heartier cocktail. Yeah, and then this this, this still has that, that nice citrus sweetness and the nice clean flavor in the agave, but the, the spice of the barrel does not, it, it doesn't turn me off of thinking that this could be mixed very well with some, some fresh citrus and not be overwhelming to the citrus, but also not be overwhelmed by the citrus. So I think this would do well in the cocktail as well. You know what I see this in? But I don't know why I thought about that, but I think maybe it's because you mentioned the orange. A tequila sunrise. Oh, you know, yeah. I, I think it would be really good in a classic cocktail, yeah. like, a, like not just the margarita or the paloma, but a, a, like a like a tequila sunrise. I think, it, I think it would hold up really well. Yeah, and and especially if you got really good, fresh ingredients for that, this would blend in real well with, with the citrus and the, and the sweetness, but it would also give it a little bit of a, a punch. You can lose your tequila yeah. in those tequila sunrises pretty easily. I don't think you'll get lost. Yeah. With it. No. Well, you know what you, you have to, I, what is it? Grenadine is, is what they're using to, to, to get that little color. You got to be careful end. what kind of grenadine you use. Exactly. Exactly. My point. Exactly. Now, just to give you the <laughs> My cough medicine. Uh, it is coming out of, um, let me let me write that down. So it is coming out of Nome 1480, which is Tequila Las Americas, which is known for its organic uh, tequilas that they that they produce for other uh, people. Uh, it is USDA certified organic, uh, and it says so on the label as well up front. Uh, the process it is it is uh, according to the sell sheet crushing roller mill, open air fermentation. It's cooked in stone brick ovens, so mamposteria or, or uh, uh, brick ovens, uh, twice distilled in stainless steel tanks with a copper coil. And these are aged in used American oak barrels. Um, the sweetness, Jim, would you say this is like a whiskey barrel instead of a bourbon barrel? Because I don't see any, I don't get any dryness, you know, like you would with a bourbon barrel than you would versus a, a whiskey barrel. Yeah, I mean, if this is a new used whiskey barrels, I would imagine it's probably um, corn or malt mash, something softer, a little bit, you know, more um, sippable without an ice cube or some water to open it up. It's, it's, it's real soft, and that pepper or spice note from the wood is, is not, it's not real big. It's, it's there very subtly, but it's, it would lead me to believe that it's more of a, um, just a, a light corn mash whiskey or something to that effect. But, okay. All right. I'll buy that. He, he lives in whiskey country. <laughs> so, yes, I do. Um, uh, if you get a chance, you might want to um, uh, check out. There was an article that I, I posted, on T, uh, not on TA, but on Facebook, on all of our social media, uh, about the, the different types of wood uh, when they, and their effect, the toasting and, and, and charring, how it affects your whiskey. And I liked it because uh, it really explained you know, how the type of wood, uh, you know, affects your whiskey and, and, and what charring does and who's proprietary, who's not. And the reason it's important to us in tequila is because there's a huge secondary market for those barrels. Right. Uh, you know, by, by law, whiskey 
has to be a virgin. It has to be a, in a virgin oak barrel, right. charred to a certain extent, or or toasted. And I and it really is a, if you can find it, it, you'll find it on our social media. Check it out. It's very important because the secondary market is so uh, important for tequila that that you know there's a reason that that these guys these distillers are looking for barrels, whether they're used, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and what they were used for, because that too will affect your tequila. And, and so far as I can tell, these guys are doing it right, man. I, I yeah. say again, uh, my verdict is this is a, this is a brand of promise right here. Nominee. I agree. Uh, I need to get, I need to get you a sign. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cause well, Okay. There's my sign. I think this is a brand of brown. There you go. There you yeah. go. <laughs> um, that is our, our secondary uh, review and take on Don Rhino Reposado, which is organic. Um, but stick with us because we're going to do the rest of the line. We have an, an Añejo and an extra Añejo. And, and, and I have some questions. Maybe Jim and I can dissect that in our next segment. But you've been watching Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our platforms. You've been watching us do... Don Rhino Tequila Reposado. Uh, I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. Wherever you're watching us, if you're watching us on Instagram or YouTube, if you're watching us on YouTube, please please subscribe down below. Press that red button, and and Jim might do a, a, a Jim and his band might you know have a barbecue at, at your house. <laughs> we'll go we'll go wherever there's tequila. <laughs> he could be the he could be you know we have a. a we have a, a, a close relationship with Roger Klein and the Peacemakers, and they have a contest every year where if you enter or whatever, you, they'll actually play at your house if you're, if you're in, for your friends and your family if you invite wow. and have a huge barbecue. And it happens once a year. These guys, these guys, you know, these guys they, they sing a cappella. They, they, you know, they, they do unplug stuff, but they've been around forever. And um, So who knows? Maybe, maybe Jim will pick up that mantle and, and him and his Yeah, friends, definitely. You know, What's the, you know, and, and, you know, bring the tequila, bring the Don Rhino. Uh, but whatever you do, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. <laughs> I'm Mike Morales. I'm CEO of Tequila Aficionado Media. And I just wanted to thank you for watching Sipping Off the Cuff. We love doing these reviews for you. Now, if you're an Agave Spirits brand owner and you're watching this, there are three things that I'd like to talk to you about. Number one, if you'd like us to review your Agave Spirit on Sipping Off the Cuff, just send me an email, mike at tequilaaficionado.com. It won't cost you a dime, and I promise you'll get an honest review. Number two, if your brand has been nominated, past or present, as a brand of promise, we can help you promote your brand effectively and affordably over on the tequila PR side of things. Just email me, mike at tequilapr.com. And number three, if your brand has ever been a Brand of Promise nominee or a winner, you automatically qualify with us or to go with us on our next promotional tequila tour. So shoot me an email tours at tequilaaficionado.com, and I'll send you all the details on our upcoming tequila tour. That's it. Thanks again for watching. Sip wisely.